Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome to today's video where we are going to go over the top five ascendancies in PoE for Calandra League. Now, even though it says Sentinel League on the screen, it is not actually Sentinel League that we'll be talking about. It is Calandra, and this uh, is the top five from last league. So we're going to look at the top five and see if there are any changes from before to now. So just so we can refresh our memory, number one is Inquisitor, number two is Occultist, number three is an Ascendant, number four is Necromancer, and number five is Champion. So if the meta is shifted, it should be completely different. If it's not shifted, it should be more or less the same. Now for my predictions, I think that Necromancer is going to fall off the place of the planet or a ray class is not even going to be in the top six, top seven, top eight, top nine. That's how I badly I think it's going to get nerfed or unrepresented. I think that Trickster might sneak into the top five. Probably not. I do think the Ascendancy is still lacking a little bit in terms of build power. And offensively, nowadays, if you don't have an Ascendancy that gives you some offense, you are pretty sure that the build is not going to feel very good, especially in today's world where you need a lot of DPS. Now for day one Calandra, if we look at the chart, we have number one Inquisitor, and I pretty much expect Inquisitor to be still up there. Number two Elementalist, this is another one I expect to be up there because Lightning Conduit is extremely, extremely OP. And Inquisitor, of course, there's always the Pox, Righteous Fire followers. Now Pathfinder, probably going to fall out of favor. Most people were playing Poisonous Concoction at the start. Deadeye is going to be up there for sure because Tornado Shot is rising. Occultist, of course. Who, who doesn't like playing with some cock? Necromancer, good joke. It's not going to be up there. And it's already at 5%. So the question is, who is going to replace Pathfinder? And that is what we'll find out. So number 5, we have Elementalist. And it is actually at, let's go take a look at it. Um, it's at top 5, 9%. Wow, that's actually not too bad. Elementalist, 9%. So Elementalist is a pretty diverse ascendancy. And I do think the main reason why it's so high is because it is home to two of the most popular league starters. Lightning Conduit and Explosive Arrow. And there's three main builds. There's Lightning Conduit, Explosive Arrow, and lastly, Ignite Vortex. A lot of people have been playing Ignite Vortex because Rue popularized it. And also, Steel, I think, played it for a little bit before he rage quit softcore trade after gambling away all his money. So 5% are actually playing Ward Loop with Volatile Dead. It's kind of interesting. Right here, we have War Loop. And, Volatile, and Ward Loop is actually kind of popular this league still. I think a lot of people just like the play style of Ward Loop where you run around, you don't need to worry about anything, and everything just dies around you. And 4% of people are playing Maul of Mischief Ignite. As in the past, this was the build I expected to be the most popular. However, it never really quite reached that overpowered stage because a lot of people didn't really care enough to boss. But you can see here, Maul of Mischief. Now, this ascendancy is pretty diverse. It really focuses on Ignite or inflicting ailments, as you can see. Lightning Conduit people play Elementalist so they can get 65% shock even on the tankiest uber bosses. Explosive Arrow, you play it because all your damage can ignite. Vortex, the same way. And it, Maul of Mischief Ignite is the same way. So pretty much a diverse ascendancy, focused on bossing, and capable of inflicting massive ailments. Now, next up, we have the ascendancy that I like so much, I did it twice. So you can see here, I have two level 100 dead eyes, or two, one level 100 dead eye and one level 98 dead eye. And the main three builds for this ascendancy include Tornado Shot, Venom Gyre and Kinetic Blast. Now all of these builds, as you may see, revolve around projectiles, chaining, and having a lot of projectiles. And there are a small percentage of players playing Lightning Arrow and Cast on Crit Ice Spear with Tornado Shot, even though many people don't really know that's a build yet. So if you go look at, let's go look at Deadeye right here. So Deadeye and Elementalist are both at like 10 to 9%, so they're pretty much right next to each other, neck and neck. So Tornado Shot, we have a bunch of different players, and if we have to look at it, there are 10% of Tornado Shot players are playing Cast on Crit Ice Spear. And then it's interesting to see 19% of people are using Interrogation. If you're using Interrogation, you're probably not Cold Conversion. So 80% of people are playing Fizz Cold Bow. And that is pretty interesting to know. Most people are also using Omni with Tornado Shot, so nothing new there. Now Venom Gyre is a newcomer, and it is pretty popular. 
almost overtaking tornado shot. And everyone is pretty much running, oh, 50% of people are running Brass Dome. And I wonder, 10% of people have Mage Blood and 15% have Headhunter. And this is a build that pretty much I was able to popularize and a lot of people are trying out. There's also a lot of people trying out the Chaos Stacking Attribute version. And this guy has the highest damage. Kind of interesting to see what he has. So he has a pretty a crafted multi-modded claw. Sometimes some things are better left un un undiscovered. But basically, Venom Gyre is a very, very, very good build. Another build that really focuses on projectiles and chaining. So next up, we have Kinetic Blast. Now, Kinetic Blast, I'm not really sure what people are doing with it on Deadeye. But if I had to assume, most people are playing five-way carries. So you can see all these people with low life, 1,000, 2,000, are playing five-way carries. There's a few in stackers out there it seems like but the majority of people are playing five-way carries and you can usually see who's a five-way carry build so they all run esh's mirror so like 60 percent of the dead eye kb people are five-way carries and then you can look at who is actually magic finding so 30 percent are magic finding so only 10 percent are actually playing a real kinetic blast build meant for mapping that's pretty interesting and there are some people playing lightning arrow and then like as i said Cast on crit tornado shots. So these are the most popular builds for Deadeye. All focused around having as many projectiles as possible. Now next up we have Ascendant. And I'm actually very surprised to see Ascendant in the top 3. The reason being is I thought War Loop was kind of a dead skill. But it seems like people just love to loop around. And that is what is happening. Now Ascendant is not all War Loop. As you can see we see that Ascendant is actually around 10% popularity. So they're all pretty much around the same. So Ascendant does have Ice Spear as his main skill, and 27% of people are playing War Loop. So that begs the question, what are the rest of the people playing? And the answer is they're playing Aura Bots. Now, Sintrek is a very, very popular Aura Bot item. So you can see that around 50% of the people are playing Aura Bots. Intuitive Leap is probably another, or actually people on Cast on Crit Ice Spear run it. But basically, Energy from Within is another Orobot item, Prism Guardian, and Conqueror's Efficiency, and Voices. So it's a very, very diverse Ascendant. And I do think Ascendant is actually probably one of the most diverse Ascendancies in the game. It allows you to play so many different builds. And any build you could think that you could play, you could also probably play it on Ascendant, right? So th that's why people in the Gauntlet was playing Poison Seismic on Ascendant. People play Int Stacker on Ascendant, people play Deck Stacker on Ascendant, people play Armor Stacker, people play Aura Bot on Ascendant, you can even play Lightning Strike on Ascendant, you can play Corrupting Fever on Ascendant, and the list just goes on and on and on and on. So Ascendant is a very, very, very diverse Ascendancy, but it's still mainly predominantly dominated by Aura Bots in terms of PoE Ninja. And it is interesting to see how many people actually like War Loop. Now, War Loop is important to know that it actually kind of got a little bit of a buff in the sense that mine over matter is now better and it's 40 percent now instead of 30 percent so that is a pretty big difference and everyone taking this node mine over matter on poe ninja is probably playing some version of war loop now the big thing about war loop is his damage actually got nearly cut in half because the gem cast one damage take his support now deals 29 percent less damage and i think before it actually dealt more damage so you actually lost around 30 percent damage for the build but Ascendant, nice to see that's still in the top. One of my favorite Ascendancies of all time. Saddest part is definitely the fact that if you look at it, where are the Aura, st aura Stackers, right? You would think that at this point in the league, there has to be some Aura Stackers. And the sad fact is, no one wants to play an Aura Stacker. Now, next up, we have an Occultist. And Occultist is namely known as the Cold and Chaos Ascendancy. Oh, shit, whoops. Now, the nice part about Occultist is that it is very, very, very good for clear if you're playing a Chaos build. As you can see, Occultus's main thing that I love is Profane Bloom. And if you ever played Occultus, you will notice that it is incredibly good at clearing the map if you're a Chaos build because everything just explodes around you. Now, if you look at it here, it's also home to some of the highest DPS builds with Cast on Crit Ice Spear. Uh, but mainly people play Occultus because they love Kalk. So the two main... Oh, I, so the top three builds are Cast on Crypt Forbidden Right, Cold and Poison BV, and Caustic Arrow Death's Oath. Now this is a build that actually a lot of people like playing, and I have found out 
that people just love playing builds where you run around and everything dies around you. So you can see here, there's a bunch of these builds. This is like the chaos version of Righteous Fire. And you have the death aura when you have the chest equipped. Now, lots of people are also playing Poison Phantasmal Spark and cast on Crit Ice Spear. Poison Phantasmal Spark relies on the alternate quality Spark that allows your Spark to have a 100% chance to poison. And Occultist Chaos builds, like I've said, I've always had absolutely amazing clear with Profane Bloom, and it is one of my favorite ascendancies. And I'm actually curious, what happened to the Bladefall Blade Blast build, right? So Bladefall Blade Blast, no one wants to play that stuff in Softcore Trade. And Poison's Concoction is nowhere to be seen. And this build, let's go check out day one. I'm pretty sure day one, Poison's Concoction was number one, right? And it was. So that's how the Great Fall and lastly, we have number one, no surprise at all here. It is the Giga Chad Inquisitor. Now, Inquisitor is the Righteous Fire build, and it's kind of interesting to see. I think Inquisitor is actually the richest ascendancy in the world because 56% of all Inquisitors can afford an Aegis Aurora, which is a 15-16 divine item currently. Now, 54% of people are playing Righteous Fire, and Righteous Fire people are rich. They are rich. They have 90% of the people have Aegis Aurora. So, yeah. Inquisitor, number one ascendancy by far. Now, the question is, who else is playing Inquisitor besides Righteous Fire? Now, if we look at it here, Eye of Winter is up here. Spark is also really up there. So, Spark and Eye of Winter. And the main thing to know about Inquisitor right now is Inquisitor, I think, is actually a pretty broken ascendancy. Especially if you're a spellcaster, the offense and defense you gain from Inquisitor is actually just insane. Pious Path pretty much means that you can run Righteous Fire on almost any build to unlock the huge Moore's Damage Multiplier from Righteous Fire. And then Sanctuary is pretty much a 15% damage Moore Multiplier. And if you're playing any elemental build, this node is 16% more damage. And then if you're playing a Crypt build, you can ignore all enemy resistances, which allows you to pretty much get another link. So Inquisitor is absolutely crazy. There's even some weird builds out there with Energy Blades with Inquisitor. So there's so many different diverse options that you can play on Inquisitor. And it really seems like a complete powerhouse ascendancy that's also home to one of the strongest builds or the most popular builds in the game, which is Righteous Fire. And it's interesting to see that probably most people who use an Aegis Aurora are all playing Righteous Fire. So actually, I'm actually curious. What happens if we only suggest select Aegis Aurora and 60% on Inquisitor? So this Ascendancy is also home to one of the best bosses, Eye of Winter Miner. is insane damage and Righteous Fire. Cast on Crit Ice Spear is also being played more on Inquisitor. I was actually pretty surprised to see that. And you can see here, if you go to Inquisitor and go to Ice Spear, you can see that there's actually quite a few people running Cast on Crit Ice Spear on an Inquisitor, pretty much just because of how, well, this is self-cast Ice Spear, this one. Pretty much just because of the generic defense and offense that the build has to offer. So this build is actually relatively tanky, and this is actually a pretty interesting setup. in Vivin set, Skin of the Lords. I like this build. It's not too bad, and pretty tanky overall. And with Aegis Aurora, it actually looks pretty budget, to be honest. But hopefully that gives you a pretty good overview of all of the top five. Now, the question remains after seeing the top five is who's not in the top five? That's probably the more interesting thing. And it's surprising to see Champion not in the top five because of the popularity of Champion Lightning Strike. But it is important to note that Lightning Strike seems popular, right? But it's actually split into three different ascendancies and Champion doesn't really show up enough. So Champion is only at 7%, but it's still good enough for sixth place. Now, Trickster is in a distant ape, and that's pretty much what I expected. Pretty much because the Ascendancy just kind of doesn't have enough offensive power to be justified to play. And most people are playing Lightning Conduit, so they're leveraging Lightning Conduit doing a lot of damage. Special Shield Throw, they're probably abusing Ming's Heart. and Oh, they're not even using Ming's Heart, but they're using Emperor's Vigilance. So there's a lot of different diverse builds, and they really have to use skills that do a lot of base damage because the Ascendancy is just low on damage. I say Trickster Righteous Fire never really caught on, and it's mostly, uh, oh yeah, and Palseron's a uh, Caustic Arrow Ballista Totem build. So Trickster is a lot better than before. This was literally 0.1% or 0%, so the rework did do something. 
So it's good to applaud GGG for that. But GGG did somehow kill off the most popular Ascendancy of all time. Necromancer is actually in 10th place. I can't even believe I'm saying that. Necromancer is actually in 10th place. And the number one minion build is back to summon carrying golems and summon raging spirits. No longer do you see uh, vol summon skeletons or skeleton mages. You don't see raised specters anymore. Even absolution is pretty far down. And wow, what a fall from grace, right? Well, joining Necromancer in the fall from grace is definitely Berserker. Berserker is in 3%. I'm not really sure what it was in Sentinel League. Should be a little bit higher. Oh, well, it's in 3%. The sentence just sucks because no one can press enough buttons. But the number one Berserker build somehow is General's Cry now. And Venom Jar Shrimp Stacker is pretty good too. And lastly, we have Lightning Strike. So a lot of ascendancies, a little bit of a shakeup, mostly all the same builds. And the Trickster rework did do something, but not enough. And I think the number one thing to take away from looking at this is that Righteous Fire is king and War Loop is still playable. But thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you find more Mirrors, Exalted Orbs, and Mage Bloods than me. And I'll be finding the Divine Orbs. And see you next time. Bye.